So tonight, Lucy. Yeah, quite an experience, actually. And, yeah, yesterday, we went to see a movie, and one of the characters, the female character, said to the Pierce Brosnan character, Thank you for saving me. And Pierce Brosnan didn't hesitate. He just turned and looked her right in the eye and said, Letting you die was never an option. <laughs> Letting you die was never an option. So we were, that was one line. It was worth the whole movie, the whole movie just for <laughs> one line. Because he, he did seem to save her, and it took her a while before she just, her heart just broke open and said, Thank you for saving me. But the, but the answer was, Dazzling. Letting you die was never an option. It's really like the Spirit, or you could say Jesus, or Holy Spirit, or whatever. Letting you die was never an option. Wow. Thank you. That's amazing. That's there. You, know, you talk about with the walking on the tightrope, and we're doing the high wire act, and then the, the net underneath. You know, letting you die was never an option. You may try some risky moves, but letting you die was never an option. And this movie really shows that um, there aren't really any options when it comes down to awakening. It's an amazing movie in the inevitable nature of awakening, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just um, sharing with David, like at some point um, I was being asked um, by seemingly older people, they're like, why? Like, how did you do this? Why are you so young? Like, why? why, why? And you, like, because we're on the same path, how did you do it? What's the secret? What's the key? And I said, the key was that I never had an option. I never had a choice. I never had, um, like, and the, we we don't. I never thought, like, I never had a false idea that I have a choice. I have options to choose from. It was only one way, and it's happening. And either you go with it, or you go with it. <laughs> and if it's like, and you you don't like it too bad, you're still going. It's like, oh, even like, you know, I got like, even like this anger I got, it's like, oh, I hate you. It's like, mm, too bad, that doesn't change anything. Off you go further. It's like, like I said, there is, there's never an option. There was never an option to stop or pause or delay or choose something else. It was just really a very direct path. And, and it's like, I always feel like, there was always feeling like, I'm not asked, like, I don't have a choice, so I was never like, oh, what, what do you think, what do you, it's like, I'm not, I'm not asked, it's just happening, something is like, you know, beyond, beyond control, and, uh, and this movie, Lucy, really demonstrates that it's just, it's a, you know, we do talk about a decision maker, making, making a choice, and, uh, choose again and this movie shows this is beyond the choice this is beyond choosing this is really there is no choice period and it's just a matter uh, well do we want to know if like if we truly if we truly want to know then this is it would be shown it would be demonstrated like and so this is this is a movie of like it's really a demonstrated of like demonstration a symbol of the mind that is ready to just like take a direct path take a direct ticket without detour without delay like a delay is not an option there and just go straight forward and even fear is not an option there isn't even in this movie there isn't even fear it's like what is it what is fear like any anything that's in the way of it in the, in the way of it that would be a delay even like talking about like oh well what about fear of god it's almost like 
that's that just waste of time, you know, talking about it in a way that it's like that would be a delay because it's like I always say the fear is not that there's blocks on the way. The fe the real fear arises when the mind actually realizes that, that there are no blocks and the way is clear and you can just go and nothing is holding you back and it's like whoa. And so yeah. So it's exciting, and it's like, and, uh, like, yeah, it's like a good demonstration, it just, like, it could be this direct, and I think, you know, and this is it, like, that's, um, like, what, it's, it's, like, to me, it feels like, for those who, like, on the, on the path, or have been on the path of A Course in Miracles, like, with the three questions, you kind of get a chance, you know, like, there's a passage about the last unanswered question, and, uh, and and Jesus says, with the three, you can still change your mind. You can go back and forth. And it's like, and Jesus lets you do the dance. And it's like, yeah, play with the choice. Play with the option. Like, I can choose. It's like, I can, like, kind of get in touch with that. Get in touch with the power of the mind, right? It's like, so, and then, but once the fourth question hits, it's like, this is where you have no choice, and it's like, if you say yes to that, then it's a direct path, and it's almost like, to me, this is what it looks like, once you've said yes to the last unanswered question, and the last unanswered question is, do I want to know the, what I've denied because it is the truth? And to me, this is a representation, one, once, what it looks like, just how fast and direct, and this is where the choice falls away and everything else just falls away. This is everything that we've learned up until then just simply falls away. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's look at that last unanswered question. Really, the four questions, three of them you could change your mind. One, it's unequivocal. There's no going back. Do I want to see what I deny because it is the truth. Do I want to see what I deny? What was denied? Light, love, Christ's vision. This world was, was the denial of light, of abstract light, of love, eternal love, of divine happiness. That's what this is. Do I want to, do I want to see what I deny? Is it is my desire to see with Christ's vision, you know, and you'll see as you go through this movie that, that time, and time and space will literally seem to like reverse and then implode. The Big Bang was seemingly an explosion, it will literally implode and, and beyond the implosion is just the light. It, it goes all the way. It's almost like this movie is an answer to the prayer. Do I want to see what I denied because it is the truth? Now, there's all these metaphors in the Course in Miracles, and some of you have been using that pathway. Maybe some of you have used a number of pathways. And there's all kinds of aspects in there about time collapse and choice and on and on and on and on. That's just like giving you some bubble gum to chew on. Listen, tonight, we're going beyond that. It's time to throw the bowl gum out. It's a little stale. Um, I went all the way to China, and, and I met all these Chinese students, and uh, it's interesting to go to China, and they're asking all these deep, profound experiences about the Course in Miracles. They've been into non-duality, of course, China has for centuries. They had read Disappearance of the Universe, they had read all the authors, they had read my stuff, and they were asking questions like, listen, you emphasize the script is written. You take that line out of the workbook, the script is written, and you emphasize it. Disappearance of the Universe, Arden and Persa are ascended masters. They're talking to Gary about, you know, collapsing time and not needing to have certain scenes appear in the script, literally shifting the script around with uh, the mind and decision points. Which is it? <laughs> I like the Chinese. Oh, it's, come on, let's get to the cut to chase. Can you change the script or not? Is it written? Is it destined? Is it predetermined? Or can I, you know, have some miracles and have you know, some rearrangements of time and space and, you know, not, not have to play out certain scenes? 
prevent certain things from happening with my miraculous choices? Or is it, you know, is it done? Is it set? Is, you know, this is the kind of stuff when you go to China, they're like, come on! And some of you know, like the story with Eckhart Tolle, the, the park bench experience, a relatively rare experience where there's this blazing kind of shift of mind, and then everything seems to change in awareness. Life is not experienced the same after that moment. You know, even though Jesus says in the Course, most are given, you know, a gradually unfolding curriculum. But that's like a flash. Well, Eckhart had that flash in the park bench, but that was what? Years ago. He's been talking and talking and talking since that park bench experience and everything. Now Lucy's going to have a flash, and time is very limited after this flash. It's going to come to a, a close in a, in a hurry. It's just, we're not talking years, we're talking hours. This is such a pof powerful, profound flesh into the inevitability. Inevit That's a great word, inevitability. She's going to flesh into that. And, and the Course does talk about the borderland, but as if all the decisions have already been made. That, again, kind of points to the scriptures written. All the decisions have already been made. All these decisions in form. What to do, where to see, you know, what to practice, all these things that seem to be a myriad of decisions are already made. It's almost like you get to a point with such a major flash that you're in the tractor beam and you are getting beamed up and there ain't nothing you can do <laughs> to stop it. You've gone too far, <laughs> to the ego's terms. You are, you are in the tractor beam. And you'll see in this movie, there's one point where she, you know, the, the crystals in the blue, in the pouch, the blue crystals in the pouch, once they seem to get released into her bloodstream, you'll see at that point, you can feel the inevitability of it, of the awakening. And then, no, Nothing is really a decision to her from that point. You don't, you don't get the feeling that she's making decisions. We're trying, we're trying to feel into something. <laughs> <laughs> trying to like, just okay, let me feel in. You know, it's like, it's, it's straight up. It's inevitable. She, it's done. From then on, it's like, she knows she's gone already. She's, it's like, the feeling is like, she's already gone. It's just a matter of, how long is the residue, right? How many hours, days? It's just, she's gone. That's done. So it's that kind of, yeah, that kind of, like, you know, that, like, the really, like, a true, a true awareness, you know, like, in the, like, in the Course, Jesus said, like, the, the world was gone, or undone, a long time ago. That's why it's all a past. It's like, do you want to know? It's like, it was like, that kind of, it's like, it's gone, we're not, like, we're not here, we're gone from here, it's like, we're not talking, this is not where we're communicating, like, the other day I looked, I was talking to David, and it was just a simple question, I just looked, he just came from somewhere, and I'm talking to David, and all of a sudden I just had this flash, and things disappeared, and I was like, oh, we're not here, it was a clear realization, we're not here, this is not, like, we're, like, we're gone. Well, this is not where we're talking. This is not the communication. This is not, this is just the after effect of that decision to really, to know the truth. And it's like, and it's not, like, you can't stop it. It's done. It is done, so. Yeah. <laughs> Jason like said during the afternoon moving, it was kind of, he's kind of led, was, it was, um, looking at deferral and, and going really deep into the, what's underneath the deferral and all that, and then starting to just touch into the involuntary nature of the miracle. That's, he told me that's kind of where he left it. He said, and yeah, Nikita and Jason, or David will take it from there. So we, we get into the taste of the involuntary nature of the miracle. And so you might say, yeah, this is really, this is what it is. It's, it's, it's this 
there's no hesitation when the inevitability hits in. It hits, it hits strong, it hits hard, and there is absolutely no hesitation after it hits. After it, it hits your mind, then that's the end. You know, they always just, Confucius say, he who hesitates is lost. <laughs> and when you are hit with this, you are found. You are definitely not lost. And you definitely don't hesitate. There's no hesitation in this. This is like the tractor beam, and the tractor beam's got you. Effectively, it's over. There's no wiggle room. You can't say to God, oh, not quite now. You know? Some of you saw the movie Waking Life. You know, at the end of the pinball, scene at the end, you know, and uh, Richard Linklater, you know, that's his character, that's Richard Linklater who's done some of the boyhood, some of these movies. He puts himself as an animated character there at the end, and, and he tells the story, you know, where basically it comes down to all of time is basically God saying, are you ready to know who you are, to be one with me, to be one with the universe, to be one self? And all of time is the mind saying, no. That's what time is, every second, no. 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 That's no. no. little hand on the <laughs> That's what time is. Time is a sequence of notes to all of life. Jesus tells us, history would not exist if you didn't continue to make the same mistake in the present. No. And then, awakening is, yes. yes. <laughs> you see that, that, is, that, that's the end of time. One unequivocal yes, as the key was saying, not like the first three questions where you can try to do it. No, yes, no, yes, no. That's, that's pretty fragment, it's pretty split to go no and yes, but to actually have, have a yes, an unequivocal yes, a final yes, desiring I am this, desiring light, desiring love, fully. Let thine eye be single. Remember what Jesus said, let thine eye be single. Let thy vision be single. Only the vision of Christ is single. Not, there's not a human perception that's single. By definition, it's fragmented. It's seeing pieces, it's seeing parts, it's seeing the tapestry, all the different parts of the tapestry, but this is what time I be single. So, and, and the, uh, the other thing is, you can see Lucy at the very beginning, she seems like human, she's like a regular human being at the beginning, where she has some fear, yeah. and then boom, after it hits, she's fearless. Um, she has some hesitation, she has some doubt. You can, but my drink's sitting there. <laughs> so can you coexist with the drink? <laughs> uh, that's a, it has to be a yes, but it has to be a yes to the whole universe. You know? it's, it's just one way of coming into the atonement. But, but basically she seems very... Uh, she seems very human, and then boom, when it hits, oh, it's not human. That is not human, after that. Humans hesitate, she doesn't. Humans think they've got years to live, she doesn't. <laughs> Humans feel they've got free will, meaning free choice in the world, she doesn't. You know, it's like really strong. And, and that's why we're, it's really, this is a very strong movie. We might, we'll have a, a movie at night too, because oh, yeah. if you, if you watch this and you can't sleep tonight, we are going to set up an automatic movie with my commentary in the middle of the night. 
when you're not able to sleep. So you can come and go, ooh, and just, if, if we have to finish you off in the night. <laughs> and that's kind of a cool idea, too. Yeah, we thought, like, we'd play Solaris. Ooh. At night time, most likely from 12, it, it's with David's commentary. Uh, yeah. So the whole thing is, I think it's three and a half hours. And this is like, like, I feel like this would be a bonus. And I think we'll be playing from like 12 a.m. to like, what, 4 a.m. or something. So it will be playing in the gathering room. So everyone who doesn't who can't sleep, they can go in and really watch this movie. It's a deep, deep, deep movie. And I said, like, this would be like a bonus. It's like a trip, you know, if you want, like, almost like, it's a trip. So I really urge everyone to take that trip, because I'm taking that trip with the David's commentaries. It's like, it's like, you'll feel like you're taking actual trip to Solaris, and you'll feel what it actually feels like. And so I've taken that trip at some point so many times, because I've been watching it every day, to the point where Spirit told me, slow down a little bit, you know, like, it's slow down. It's stronger than LSD, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we're going to play tonight, for sure. Tonight, we'll play Solaris in Gathering Room, and it's just going to play um, at, or here, or in the gathering. Next to the kitchen. Yeah, next to the kitchen here. And so that way it's more cozy, it's quieter, and those who can't sleep, you guys can just like relax and enjoy it. Just follow the flashlights. Yeah. If, if people yeah. are in the campground, you see little flashlights <laughs> parading up around you. They're heading up to see Solaris because they can't sleep. Oh. Yes, yeah, I just want to say, like, uh, I saw that uh, commentary with David earlier this summer. I don't even exactly know what I watch, <laughs> but I just know that since then it's been like my favorite movie or like commentary. It was so profound. I don't even know what it was. <laughs> so maybe. It's a trip. It's like taking a trip out of this world because you we're talking like you know we're going beyond this world, and so watching that movie with the commentary that that. The feeling is like you're taking a trip out of this world, and this is what it looks like. And it's just, I mean, it's amazing. Do take that trip. Like, really take a trip. And it's like even, like, let's say, allow it even for three and a half hours. Allow just, like, to really surrender to it. Imagine you're on, the, on, that, tr on that ship. And be very, um, and be very... Present with everything that's going to show up in your mind. Just be very present. And I, I was saying, actually, um, you know, because um, uh, it's unconscious. You, we may not even know what's going to show up because it is really, truly unconscious. And it's like I was saying, it's like with David, like where I'd be sitting there, right, at a table, and I'd be like, <gasps> all this turbulence, and I wouldn't even know what it is because it's so raw. And... I was telling to someone, I'm like, well, of course it is. It's like being around Solaris all the time. Yes, things are going to come up in a very raw way because it's like for release because the light is like in your face. The light is so close. So, um, yeah, and it's just like, and, and you know, and just, wow, it's just allowance, just a very deep allowance to do that. Like, again, yeah, just a deep invitation to do this, and this is just... For that, and it's like at night. At night, his wife came to him, and then watch who comes to you at night. And and then and then like watch who comes to you at night. But it's like be aware, like but like be totally. You invited them. It's like this one kind of waited to show up. It's just like with that, like have it like. Have it be with that kind of attitude, like this is not random, and it's just see who shows up, what shows up. Yeah, this is called, we're giving you the, the wake up, this is a wake up call with eye candy. We're going to do Scarlett Johansson and then George Clooney. Uh, so you've got two shots tonight follow Scarlett or follow George. It's eye candy, even if you're drowsy, it's, you know. It's, it'll hold you, and then go for it, then just give your way over completely to it. 
because uh, there's a part with George Clooney in Solaris where he's wondering what, what exactly happens at night up here near Solaris, and his friend says, uh, I'd lock your door. <laughs> he says, I'd lock your door. Uh, and he, at one point he says, I could tell you what's, what's happening, but that wouldn't really tell you what's happening. Because it's not speakable in words, but you can still get it, what it's about. So really with Lucy, there's two tries tonight. One, you can go with Lucy right now, and that's the short version. Or if you can't sleep after Lucy, then you can plan to pull an all-nighter and <laughs> just walk on up to flashlight or whatever and, come, and just go in there and just get your pillow. And one way or the other, you want the Holy Spirit to get you tonight. Uh, yeah. With one of these two. Oh, yeah. You think? Okay. Sign seal. Because I guarantee you, if you just give yourself over, you will never hesitate. You will never have a hesitating decision to make again. Isn't that relaxing? Yeah. To reach the end of this, trying to figure out what to do. How to handle all these problems, how to handle your bills, how to handle relationships, how to handle your emotions. Mm -hmm. It can be quick. It can be very, very, very quick. Yeah. Yeah, very, very strong. Very strong. The best, this is my favorite movie now, so. This is the most awesome movie. Yeah, and and really that would that would make a very short movie fest for you. If, you know, tonight you can bring it into it quickly. You might need any additional uh, movie watching, which is really good. It's it's quick and painless, and you know, and then then it's over. And the only other reason we had a movie fest is we just threw some other things in there, you know, just in case. It's like it's the same. It's the same thing as Jesus starts out. Like it's a very simple course. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Right? It's like get it, good. Right? And, and then there's like six hundred more pages. Right? And it's the same thing. It's like this is it. That's all there is, really. Right? Lucy. However, there might be some more movies. <laughs> so. Yes, our, our this tonight is tonight we're just doing one lesson from the course, and I don't even know if we have a course book in here. I used to, do we have we got one here tonight. Tonight we're doing with Lucy. We're doing. Um, let's see, I know that lesson. Tonight we're doing. Which one is it? One we're doing tonight. Oh, it's Lesson 139. Oh. I will accept atonement for myself. What does Jesus say about decision and choice? Here is the end of choice. Oh. It's the way, oh. this is the start of the lesson. This. Lesson 139, I will accept atonement for myself. Here is the end of choice, for here we come to a decision to accept ourselves as God created us. And what is choice except uncertainty of what we are? Ah, there is no doubt that is not rooted here. There is no question but reflects this one. There is no conflict that does not entail the single simple question, what am I? Wow! Yet who could ask this question except one who has refused to recognize himself? Only refusal to accept yourself could make the question seem to be sincere. The only thing that can be surely known by any living thing is what it is. Right. From this one point of certainty, it looks on other things as certain as itself. Uncertainty about what you must be is self-deception on a scale so vast, its magnitude can hardly be conceived. To be alive and not to know yourself is to believe that you are really dead. To believe that you are really dead. Wow. For what is life except to be yourself? And what but you can be alive instead? Who is the doubter? 
What is it he doubts? Whom does he question? Whom can answer him? He merely states that he is not himself, and therefore being something else becomes a questioner of what that something is. Yet he could never be alive at all unless he knew the answer. If he asks as if he does not know, it merely shows he does not want to be the thing he is. So, that's why we're saying, you can dive into it. It's not really a matter of time. The high fives on the mountain, and that's the top of the mountain, the end of choice. So really, we're just doing lesson 139 tonight. Thank yeah. you. Yes. When I went to sleep last night, my, my cell phone was on alarm, and when I woke up this morning, it was on that page, on, on my cell phone, <laughs> and I thought, wow. I saw whenever Sundari's eyes get really big, her mouth flies open. <laughs> Maybe she's going down the rabbit hole with Lucy tonight. Just go with Lucy. Go with Lucy. Don't, don't go back. Wherever she's going, you want to go too. And notice how Eva wants to judge her pathway. Sometimes at the beginning she uses a gun. It sits quick. It's really quick. But more and more she, she doesn't even need the gun as she goes along. There's no need for guns. There's no need for guns. Where she's going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that like, really is, like, yeah. It's, it's a funny thing, it's almost like defenseless, although you wouldn't even think of that. It's like, like take no thought for a gun. Like, there's nothing, it's like there's total awareness that there's nothing on the way. There's nothing on the way, even like, and I, I look at it like there's a really great scene of her driving, like, it's like quantum driving, and she's driving, like, <laughs> different way, so like against the... Like one way. One way. Up against the one-way street. Yeah, against the one-way street, and it's like, and she knows that there's nothing on her way. She knows, there's a full awareness that she's not trying to maneuver, and it's like, and be a good driver, and this is, she knows that there's literally nothing on her way, and so, yeah, there's no accidents, no nothing, and that kind of awareness, it's like, there's, the way is clear, there's nothing. It's like, yeah, it's amazing. And we'll start the movie here because we know you're you're ready for salivating. it. Salivating. Salivating. <laughs> that would be like salivating. It's completely salivating. It's kind of fun because it, it brings a lot of things together. Like sometimes you know you hear things about near death experience research. I call it near life experience because it's all about opening to the light. But um, has anybody ever heard of um, like parapsychology? You know, it's been around for quite a few decades. And and psychic abilities? Uh, yeah, let's name some. Call it out. Uh, name some psychic abilities. Clairvoyance. Clairvoyance. Telekinesis. Telekinesis. Foreknowledge. 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 Remote viewing. Is another one. Um, Channeling. Channeling. Um, omniscience. Yes. Omniscience. Okay. Now, let's just have fun watching Lucy, because these sometimes are called supernatural abilities. Supernatural. They don't call them <coughs> natural, they call them supernatural. Why do they call them supernatural? Because a lot of human beings go, whoa. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Or those. But Lucy's, she goes through the whole gamut. She, all these so-called supernatural abilities are very, become increasingly natural to her, including transcendence, you know, which is not an ability, it's just what is. Inevitability. It's inevitability. It's not ability, it's inevitability. So that's another fun thing about this, is because she's pretty rapidly goes through all of these abilities that are studied in parapsychology. Psychokinesis, the ability to like move objects. Oh, she's moving more than objects. She'll end up moving all of Earth. Here's our transcendent being joining us. 
We're going to head Lucy tonight, and then we're going to show Solaris with my commentary in the middle of the night for those who can't sleep. Helen has just arrived. So. It's a movie, it's a lesson 139. I will accept the atonement for myself. Movie night. Okay, so now we can close. Helen is in now, and so we can close the doors and the, the gates. All the escape hatches, the worldly escape hatches are being closed. Um, I don't know, we could end up pausing at certain points. We probably will. There's some points that are just like, oh, so good. Juicy, juicy, juicy. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Hold on to your hats, because the cosmos is going by them. Cosmos. I hear God's whisper, I am the Savior. That's the closing song, is the credits, at the end of the credits. And you can see that God's whisper come up in the credits. I hear God's whisper, I am the Savior. I think we've had that song. Don't worry, we played around here. When she touched fingers with Lucy, did that remind you of that picture that's famous, like God on the cloud and Adam and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the famous one, I think. Sistine Chapel, yeah. What was the song at the end? God's it? Whisper. It, we didn't, they didn't film yeah. the credits, but yeah, you could do a little search. God's Whisper. God's whisper. I, I hear God's Whisper. I am the Savior. We played it the other night at the dance party. Yeah, because I heard that at the dance party. It's, a, it's almost got like a tribal, yeah. an ancient tribal sound to it. Amazing. It's kind of fascinating, too, if you go back to the beginning of the movie, when you first hear the Morgan Freeman character talking about, you know, life was given us so many billion years ago. And it starts off, I think he's talking like, like a single neuron. And then he says, it gets interesting when there's two. And that's when they show all the, that's when they show all the movements of all the creatures and everything. So sometimes, you know, we talk about the movement of life, the movement of life, but guess what is also an illusion? Movement. movement. Life actually doesn't move. Spirit doesn't move. You know how we, oh, the spirit moved me. You know, that's, <laughs> that's not, the, that's, and in fact, that's seeing the illusion for what it is, that there's actually never been any movement, ever, or change. Remember, spirit is changeless. Eternity is changeless. So, so change is the illusion. And change is synonymous with time. So we've been coming up with some great synonyms, you know, time, death, change, movement. They're all the same. They're all the same. Oneness doesn't move. There's no place to move. Place is a concept. People sometimes will say, where do we exist in the cosmos? There is no location. That's, that's, time and space are the same illusion. We were asked at the beginning to talk a bit about space. We talk about time, time, time. This movie had a lot about time, but actually space is the same illusion. It's a figment of imagination. We talked about that quite a bit. Just all imagination. One, one thing I thought about, about the name they chose for the leading character now. I don't, uh, years ago when they said they had discovered the, the first mother of the whole human race, they named her Lucy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it, exactly. <laughs> we got to see her. <laughs> the little, the yeah. little finger. <laughs> Kevin's here too. I think after this movie came out, I, I mentioned the other day that uh, that Kirsten and I wrote, did some write-ups and everything 
Maybe you could come up here, over here, and I can just give you the microphone. Oh, Kevin, do you, you, my gosh, he, he sees so many things in these movies. Mm -hmm. I think I saw it one or two or three times, and then I read an email from Kevin, and I was like, whoa. He saw so much in this movie. It just went on and on and on, and the symbology, you know, seeing... You probably have to see it maybe 50 times. Come, <laughs> yeah. okay. well, come up, come up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gift this, but this is our enlightenment night, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> we have a little more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick, this is like unwinding the cord. <laughs> okay. Unwind your mind. Unwind your mind. There we go. Yeah, um, I, yeah. There were a lot of details that were noticed uh, that seemed significant in the movie when I when I saw it. Uh, but right now, just when you're just talking about where could spirit go, where could oneness go, and, and movement, and I've been really feeling that recently is just uh, just movement at all, like not. Um, but I'm also wondering about creation too. Like I was wondering if you could. Maybe talk about creation and then movement, but maybe like if there's another sort of movement that's possible, or um, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what it said in Genesis in, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And what we're starting to see is the heavens are our creation, but not the heavens like in the sky somewhere or somewhere the cosmos, but that's like the eternal oneness of, of spirit. And so that's creation, and it seems they have qualities like we call radiating or extending, but, but even that radiating and extending doesn't involve movement, because movement is, is a time-space construct. You know, there has to be coordinates or objects or things in relation to each other. That's what movement is. It's it's things in, in relation to others. Like like they've studied, uh, for example, Einstein. A lot of scientists have, have recent scientists even have studied uh, black holes, and they find an amazing gravitational field in black holes, much much stronger than Earth, like way way more stronger. So things that we take for granted as far as weight. How many pounds do things weigh? Or, or when astronauts go to the moon, there's less of a gravitational pull, so we can see the astronauts bouncing up high and seeming to just dance across the moon's planet because there's not so much. But, but gravitation is is tied into the perception of time and movement, and so it's all part of like a relative cosmos that has no creation or no existence at all. It's, I think, um, Jesus does say at one point in the Course, he calls it a vast illusion. Vast meaning applying to the cosmos. All these, we're still discovering, scientists are still discovering galaxies and more galaxies and more galaxies. It seems to be infinite, but it's actually finite. Just like um, stars, you know, we used to have love songs, as long as the stars shine in the heavens, I will be loving you. Now we know they're just gases burning out. They were <laughs> finite. So if anybody tries to convince you with this romantic thing of, I'll love you as long as the stars in the heaven, turn it down. Right? Turn it down. Say, that's finite. Is that all? Is that the best you can do? <laughs> Come on. Give me, bring me higher love, oh, oh, like eternal love, is love without end. That's, that's all you could ever be content with, because that's what you were created as, is eternal love. So everything that we call the cosmos is, is finite. It's kind of interesting too, when we talk about this motion stuff, because I love these quantum physicists now, that have like literally mapped out the cosmos. They, they say the Big Bang happened and then it's, instead of being this thing that's in motion, it's this static thing, it's like a photo. Mm -hmm. And it depends on where you are inside the photo, 
let the illusion of where you seem to be in terms of evolution or whatever, like inside of it, but it's actually static. It's like this flat static thing. They've even got a shape of the cosmos. It's kind of cool to see like the shape of it. Just like you see the shape of a, of a computer or a banana, it's like the whole cosmos is there. It's an amazing thing. And then it says from inside of it, it seems like it's in motion. Inside of it, it seems like it's still happening, but it's not. It's really over and done. It's like a, just like a photo. It's, it's literally that flat, that static. It's not dynamic at all. Dynamic seems to imply movement, force. So, you know, that's like, that's, you could say that's the final frontier. That's really the undoing. When you say, I'm growing, I'm evolving. Mm -hmm. no, no. Mm -hmm. My life is in constant motion and movement. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it's all a lie. Everything's a lie. Birth is a lie. Death is a lie. Evolution is a lie. Did Darwin have it right? No. Did the creationists, so-called the Bible, you know, God created the heavens and the earth and Adam and Eve story and all that? No, 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 no. And this is what I meant when I told Suzanne one time when she asked me, can you describe enlightenment? I said, it's, well, it seems to be damn, 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 ah. And the ah is just seeing that it's much ado about nothing. All of it, really. Yes. Well, it's so funny. I mean, you just said Adam and Eve. Just, I, I mean, the number of times I'm thinking what you're thinking is crazy to me. Um, it's so interesting. Next month, on September 24th, is the Jewish New Year, and it's 5775. And I, I looked last year, and I thought, where's the zero? You know, what's the zero? And it turns out that the zero in the Jewish calendar is the moment Adam and Eve were expelled from paradise. And so it's the moment of eating of the tree of good and evil. It's like the, the tree of that knowledge. And so time starts with judgment in the Jewish calendar. And I thought that was so cool. I thought, ooh, this aligns with Course in Miracles. <laughs> it's, uh, at least in my mind. Um, that there it is. See? Such wisdom. Time starts with judgment. It's, there's more synonymous. There's another word we can throw in. Death, motion, <laughs> judgment, time. Judgment. Yeah. It's all, it's, we're seeing it's all the same. And she did say that at one point, you know, she said, when she was talking about um, all the different things that seem to be going on, really she was just saying they're all, everything is the same because it's all time. That's the sameness of all things. It's time. And time isn't real, so that all things, you know, that's where the unreality of all things comes in. <laughs> I just realized something else too. <laughs> that's great. I love it. I just love to see the witnesses. I lean to the left and there's <laughs> Kevin's face. <gasps> that looked like, like uh, Lucy, you were like, <laughs> it's your whole face, your smile, your eyes, your cheeks. Tell us. <laughs> well, Alright, well just, uh, we're talking about time, but um, the uh, the scene, you know, when everything's being unraveled, and when she's in Times Square, and she get bla gets blasted from the back, there are a lot of like little um, posters that were signed, or signs that were posted all over, either electronically or like street signs, and one of them was, we've got your back, so that kind of felt to me like the Holy Spirit, you know, once you release yourself to its, you know, <clears throat> bringing, you, bringing the mind into full awakening, then it just goes. Um, there's also um, brain tonic and street cleaning right next to each other, so it's kind of like the brain, you know, the whole idea of like a conditional system of we have to go back and freeze it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the, the time, uh, time square, I mean, just like the sense of a square in a box and being in, in form, in de de defined form, not abstract. Mm. Mm. Time square. Yeah, time square. It literally is time square, but it's being done square. there. And then also when you said time, like the big X that was there for like maybe half the, the scene in the time square is like times, you know, like multiple, I don't know, times, yeah, but also yeah. the Roman numeral for 10 and like 1 and 0 kind of, it's like 
some like reality and nothing is still reality. There is no illusion of nothing. And then just with words, um, Lucy uh, is uh, derived from the, the word Latin word for light. And then um, Pierre um, del Rio is like rock of the, the river. And for some reason I got the sense of like river of time or the illusion of motion. So there's this rock, this sense of like a, an entity that's existing in this flow of, you know, sequential time or whatever. But then the light comes in like almost by grace or beyond logic and, 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 and lifts it out of... of of, of all that it knew before, uh, and so that's what, you know, Pierre is just totally like, and then he just lets, you know, let's go to that flow, um, and, but he can't go where, beyond, because it's still within time, within the river, the, but, but at least the rock got loosened, maybe it's going, but then, uh, yeah, he gets a hint of it at the end when she says, I am everywhere, um, but I don't know, time, that, that just kind of reminded me of that when you said that. Kevin, I lost the rock. I got, what was the rock? Yeah. Pierre, 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 Pierre. That was his name? Yeah, his name was Pierre, which means rock. Yeah. Del Rio, rock of the river. And Lucy means? Light. 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 So Lucy was the light. And he was the rock, or the rock of the river. The river being motion, rock kind of solidity, and Lucy, light. Which, again, that's, that's what it came to. Everything kind of imploded. You, remember, you can see the gases before the formation of the planets, and kind of the streaming gases, kind of like coming from the Big Bang, kind of radiating outward as a Big Bang from an explosion. And this was like an implosion. You could see them moving in the other direction, like the gases all coming and imploding together, and the, and the molten lava, like that we have in Hawaii right now, <laughs> that's underneath. The formation of the, the crust in the world, you know, it was just reversing everything, kind of taking it back. Time goes backwards. Talk about a regression. Yeah, that's like an ultimate spirit regression, all the way to the I am this. Yeah, I am everywhere. Everywhere, my favorite line. And we've had movies where we'll also see transcendence. And his wife's asking. Johnny Depp character, where are you? And he said, almost at the beginning, that's the only difference. And she's asking, where are you? After he has transcended the body, and he says, I'm everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's the experience we're going for. It's coming through, yeah. streaming through on the big screen. David? I'm everywhere. Yes? Um, when when uh, Lucy kissed here, mm -hmm. and wasn't her words say, to remind me? As a reminder. As a reminder. Yeah. 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 So, to came coming to mind that did she want to be reminded of her her, her purpose or um, to all humanity because of the you know the conversation she had with uh, the Morgan Freeman character initially to to the knowledge to to share it to give it um, what was his words exactly to, like the. Pass it on. To pass it on. Pass it on. Right. So it was a reminder, sort of like a, a mission that she had in a way that she wanted to give. Like it was motivating her. I know we've talked about the expansion into wake up and the hundred percent, but she also was why she created the the computer, or to pass it on. And so he was like that symbol for her when you say the rock, you know. Mm -hmm. we had, I, I don't know, it was such a, a simple kiss. It wasn't yeah. a French mm -hmm. kiss. No. It wasn't a juicy kiss. It wasn't a wet kiss. It was just like a contact kiss. It was, it was like, kind. It was, it was really contact. a kind, like a sweet kiss. Yeah. Almost, like, almost like a kiss that you could give a child when you're saying goodnight. You know, when you're, you're say sweet dreams and you have a little kiss. It was, it was a, a kind of a quick, soft, Yes, but it, it wasn't really romantic. No, no, no. Um, that's what was interesting. And as a reminder, I just think a reminder of the simple, the simplicity, the softness. I, I, I think it was like, I, I really feel like it was a holy relationship expression. It was like, for a reminder, because he, he was trying to, he was thinking, am I needed anymore? He was hoping she was going to say no, because <laughs> he was really afraid. Okay. <laughs> what, you know, it was freaking him out. He even said that in the car, but, but it was such a, 
a soft, simple kiss as a reminder. It was just another, I think, light use of symbols. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a neediness kiss. It wasn't, and it certainly she wasn't trying to get anything mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. You know, so there was no motive to get anything. And there, it was kind of a brief one too. It wasn't like meant to make arouse something or arouse or make something okay. continuous in time. Okay. Kind of a kiss to, to get a future kiss or a, a kiss to have a prolonged kiss. You know, it was really just it was kind of a short, sweet <laughs> reminder. Things are okay. Things are okay. Yeah, okay. like a calming kind of thing, like to calm mm -hmm. his fears. Or love. It's okay. Yeah, or love. Yeah. Simple love. Simple love. Yeah. The most simple yeah. expression. That's what I was trying to get at. I, I actually had a kiss like that just recently. A, a total stranger. Huh? And it, it, it's the most incredible thing that ever happened. Well, not the most incredible thing that ever happened. But <laughs> 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 close. And, and um, it, it was after um, some body work, right? And, but it went beyond that. And we were just doing this eye gazing. Just total eye gazing. And then the moment happened, and I, there was all of the things you just described. It was, it was not sexual, it was just so sweet, and so soft, and so light, and just like, what was that? That kind of... And he said, it was a reminder that you can have this always. It's the same word, reminder. He, he did. Reminder. You can have this, this is a reminder that you can have this 24-7, Almost, because we were just in this deep, you know, it was beyond words. I mean, it reminded me of it. I didn't think I was ever going to tell anyone that. I, I never had, until this moment. <laughs> It's like some kind of transmission where you're, if you're in the tractor beam, and that's what we were saying, just go with Lucy, and you're like... <laughs> you're just adorable. What other word can we come up with? There's none. <laughs> you're just tra transparent and adorable. <laughs> You're a reflection of all, all of our our mind, our more one mind. Yeah. No, it's, it's beautiful. It's innocence. Innocence. I, I witnessed him when he first walked in the door here. He was like... <laughs> <laughs> And you probably thought the same thing we did. That's adorable. It's just adorable. And then, yeah. <laughs> That's how you walk yeah, through the day. <laughs> yeah, I just felt like, yeah, with all that, that whole room, it just felt yeah. so. Oh. <laughs> no, I just, um, yeah, the whole movie, I just. Especially right from the from the get go, it was like it's so profound. I, I like, I wasn't sure what. Oh, I'm not sure I had any thoughts really. Other than I felt this like almost you know fear of awakening, like stuff like coming up, like oh, this is like oof, I feel like being carried or something right now. But it was at the same time. It just um, I kept feeling like joy from it. I don't know. I just, <laughs> The only word that's coming to mind is profound or deep. <laughs> the same thing with uh, Solaris, just, yeah, like no words really. <laughs> just, like, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nicholas told me one day, he said, Every day, I fully expect to wake up. I, I, I live every day in full expectation that today is the day I'm waking up. I thought that was 
amazing. Like, not tomorrow, not, not somehow, <coughs> today is the day. Today is my day. <laughs> it always feels like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could talk about Nicholas, like, knowing lots of you from our encounters in different parts of the country and the world, and hearing your stories, and, yeah, and, and everyone, you know, it's like, everyone to me is just, is just that reflection of, of that union, that love. Because uh, it's, it is swift, like when I first talked to you, Nicholas, I think we, we did a Skype call, and you were up in, was it Quebec, or, Quebec, yeah. in, at university. Yeah. He was right in, enrolled in university, <laughs> and it was just a symbol of being in, in what they call higher learning, uh, in this world. And now he's into music, movies, and mysticism. Uh, yeah, <laughs> some higher learning. He's, and he's, he's not institutionalized anymore, I don't think. Uh, although some people will say the monastery is an institution, but they don't really know the essence of it. I feel like I can't even remember the beginning of the festival. <laughs> Yes, yeah, time. Like, it all blurs. Yeah, and I was also, I was sharing at the... Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I was uh, sharing at the lunch table, maybe yesterday, the day before, I can't remember, that uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't even see the point in me going to class, because before class I'd be watching like all these videos with you and other people, and then I'd go to class and be like, okay, okay, and then right after class it'd be washed again because I'd keep watching videos. I was like, that was just pointless. <laughs> and like, I'd, just, I'd spend the whole class and be like, okay. So, what video did I have on put next? Like, for a day? <laughs> I just, I couldn't, it just didn't speak to me anymore. I, I tried, I mean, it's still doing all right, but. Yeah, I <laughs> felt like I just, even with my email, I just wanted to be in a space where I could kind of let it all go. And I was just mm -hmm. kind of scared to do it at school, seemingly by myself. <laughs> so this has been a, is and has been just a big blessing to me. So thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so much. Yeah. It's a good witness and just let it I all know. go. Evening movie Solaris. <laughs> Solar is light is Solaris. It's just again, yeah. That's what it seems to be the point of everything. <laughs> Lucy, life. Solar is light is. These are our movies we end up watching. It's like the comic cosmic humor. What if, do you guys have a one track mind? Light. Lucy Light, and then Solar is, Light is. So in case you didn't get it with Light, then the follow-up movie tonight is Light Is. <laughs> <laughs> it's really it's hilarious. Or down like that. I watch them while they're still in the movies. It's called Life's 32. Okay. <laughs> Steve's giving away all of our secrets. <laughs> We're live to the whole universe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the FBI. <laughs> 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 They'll never find us. We're just light. We're moving too fast. They really exist. That's right. There, there is no FBI. They can't find this is our cosmic humor, though. We, we do that. I, I know. Isn't it great? No private thoughts. <laughs> That would be unwinding. Unwinding. <laughs> <laughs> the guys in the black. Okay, we'll all get pajamas and we'll meet at the jail down there at the uh, Duchenne. <laughs> Everyone wears striped shirts. BYOB. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> it's all for the unwind. <laughs> it is. It is. That's the best part. We just, oh my gosh, we just love you all so much. It's just so much fun being here. It's like we're having an ongoing party. Yeah. And, and everyone's just chipping in with their joyful spirits. So wearing their big glasses, that's great. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> <laughs> Big 3D glasses. She's ready for the 3D movies. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. As soon as we put these Solaris up, maybe that <laughs> could kick in. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you remember that from the. The movie fest, Chrissy was in here yeah. in her uh, pink, in her PJs. pink yeah. PJs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was just a, that was a beautiful symbol. Oh, yeah. And there, there she is in her pink PJs again. That's just like, oh. Uh, okay, we love you. If you can sleep, sweet dreams. If you can't, it's okay. Tomorrow.